everyone. How's it going? Um, welcome to, uh, obviously I'm in my truck and I got my camp. <laughs> Alright, so that, that intro, that was a very, uh, that was a very, very, very interesting intro. I did not expect. I set I set my tripod up in a way that I thought would distribute the the freaking the the weight properly. And I, you know, my my dashboard isn't flat, but still, I went over a speed bump and my camera did a, a full on front flip. I, I go out into the street and my camera falls off again. I had to pull over to the side of the road, put my hazards on. That it was wild. Um, anyways, yeah, welcome to the channel and I'm sorry for the lighting here. I got tinted windows and um, I got a wide angle lens so it doesn't let a lot of light in. Doesn't let a lot of light. That sounds like a, a rhyme, a rap rhyme thing. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to today's video. Welcome to Reading Between the Lines. Um, this is a channel where I talk about books and things of that nature. Today, obviously, we're gonna talk about a book. It's not gonna be so much of a book review. It's gonna be more of a discussion. Um, it's gonna be more of a, of me just kind of talking. Um, so if you hate, if you hate me talking, you know, don't, you don't gotta listen, but if you like to hang around and, you know, be a part of the squad, that works too. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna be talking about the subtle art of not giving a f No, yo, I told you, I told you not to censor it. Like what, don't, what are you censoring it for, pal? Mark Manson did a great job. All right, I gotta, I gotta back into the spot real quick. There we go. All right. Let's drop the steering wheel so we got something to focus on. There we go. Look at that. Much better. Much better. Um, so, subtle art, not giving a fuck. We can't censor. You can't censor any curse words, any, any concept from this book because that is what makes this book this book. The ability to get a point across in such a way that resonates with people because it's so out of the ordinary, right? So we can't, we can't take that away from the book. So, anyways, subtle art, not giving a fuck by Mark Manson is by far, I think, I think one of the best books to help somebody achieve a happier life. And then from there, that happier life can lead to maybe a for, uh, maybe a, uh, a much more financially stable life, uh, emotionally stable life, spiritually stable life. Everything in life can kind of expand and grow and get better from this concept. Again, I just want to discuss kind of one part of this book because in this book there's a lot of little things um, that kind of come off this overwhelming concept and just that overwhelming concept concept at least the way that I understood it was you you got to be able to choose and decipher what you want your life to be uh, filled with or what you want to care about because if you if you live a life where you're just doing things and listening to people and and being around situations that you don't care about not that you don't want to be in because sometimes you know if you're if you're doing something that you actually love to do like finish something you might find yourself in a situation or area that you don't want to be in but it's just being a part of and and uh, letting those situations or people or ideas control you um, in such a way that you you're not making your own decisions of living a happy life. So um, that was kind of confusing. I kind of confused myself saying that. But a good example, like my mom. I love my mom to death. Um, she is the one and only mom. She's she's kind of out there. She's kind of she's kind of loco, but she is my mom and I love her. So when I was a kid growing up, she all, I remember she was always doing something for somebody, whether it was a friend or maybe she, it was a stranger at the store. She was always going out of her way to do something for somebody. And that's good, right? That's golden to have a good heart and to be, uh, to, to be so giving. That's super awesome. But you have to understand there's a point to where you got to say, OK, this is enough. This is where I'm going to draw the line. And and at that point, that's kind of where this whole subtle arm not giving a fuck comes into play so once you once you hit that thought where you're like okay this is enough um whether it's giving money to people or or um, not hanging out with certain friends or uh or even hanging out with certain friends getting out of your loneliness or your introverted lifestyle or whatever it may be once you hit that point that's a beautiful point if you can understand why you're doing it it's about choosing the things that you want to do 
if I can give this man a high five every day for the rest of my life, I totally would because he's helped me get out of the get out of the murky waters of that of that mindset of living a life that you don't want to live. And it's not it's not it's not like it sounds really dark, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living and doing things that you don't want to do. It's all about choosing the life that you want to live, choosing the things that you're willing to put up with. Because he says this in a book in multiple ways. But no matter what you choose to do in life, think of whatever you want to think of, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your hobby that you love with all of your heart, your super passionate about it there's always problems there's always gonna be problems but the overall concept man is just just knowing and understanding and finding what you're willing to put up with whatever with whatever you're doing I've had I've had I've had the struggle of doing things um, and this this happened probably started happening uh, a few years back as I would just start doing everything for everybody kind of falling into that same trend that my mom uh, was dealing with as I was growing up and it's cool right everyone I had all the friends in the world because everyone loved me because I would do everything for everybody and that's golden that's great but at the end of the day I was like what have I done for myself like whatever what have I done to enjoy my life and that was the question the overwhelming question that 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 built up you know I, the, fir the first time I thought about it I was probably it probably just probably just brushed it off and I was like ah oh, it's whatever it'll come at some point but I wasn't actively chasing it, and then it just built up and built up and built up and built up until there was a lot of resentment and, and, and animosity within me for myself and for others. And and finding that, finding that out and understanding why that animosity and resentment built up was a great thing that I did because I mean I was having, I couldn't sleep, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have an appetite, I didn't want to do anything because I was so angry at so many people, including myself. And, uh, and I got to thank my boy Lionel, LTA, Lions Tell Adventures. I got to thank him because he told me, he was like, yo, listen, obviously we're, we're friends and he, know, he knows the, um, the situations that, that go on in my life for the most part. I mean, he doesn't know how long like my pinky toenail is or anything, but, you know, as a good friend would know, he would, you know, kind of know what's going on. So, I, you know, I give him updates and he's like, listen, bro, it sounds like this, that, and the other thing and read this book. So he told me to read Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and I was like, Okay, so I, I didn't go into this book thinking like it was gonna solve all my problems. I got I got into this book in the first chapter. I was like, okay, this is this is jackpot. So I listened to the whole book, and it was I think it's like a five hour five hour audio book if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I listened to it, and I was like, man, this is this is this is gonna help me out a lot. And like I said, there's an overwhelming there's an overwhelming concept in the book that and it has a little all these little like side notes. It's just it's just a reminder. Like it, it came to me as a reminder to to just stop giving a fuck about the things that I don't care about. You know what I'm saying? Like I just stopped doing things that I didn't want to do. And and people, you know, people people were like, Brandon, what's wrong with you? Like what's what's the deal? Cause I changed. I went from this like from this guy who did everything for everybody, like I mentioned, to this to this guy who was basically non existent and only doing the things that I wanted to do. And uh, it, it was it was it was a weird transition and you know now I'm now I'm where I'm at doing what I'm doing and it's like I said it's just it's just weird like it's just, it's a weird feeling it's a good feeling it's definitely a good feeling because I'm doing exactly what I want to do um, but it's just it's just a different feeling but it's a feeling that I, that I that I hope that a lot of people can come across through, at some point throughout their life I don't, I don't think it's ever too late for someone to to kind of uh, to kind of change their mindset and change what they do and what they enjoy and all that stuff. But yes, the the, the main part of, of this discussion was kind of just to introduce the concept of uh, of not giving a fuck about the about the things that you don't that you genuinely don't care about. Because um, at the end of the day, man, you're just wasting you're just wasting your time. You know what I'm saying? People say, you know, I mean, no one knows what what like what happens when we die. No, people, oh, you go to heaven. Okay, that's one thing. Um, reincarnation, that's another thing. Um, there's nothing after, you know, that's, that's another idea, but no one knows for sure. No one knows for sure. So, so the only thing that we do know is that we're here in this moment right now. You're here watching this video. I'm here technically in the past filming this video, but this is all we got is right now. So, so what's the point in, in doing things that you don't want to do? And, and this, it sounds kind of, uh, it's kind, it sounds kind of like quit your job and chase your dreams. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just creating a life around what you want to do in terms of uh in terms of changing your mindset quitting your job down the road might be something that happens due to or th that might be something that happens down the road because of you changing your mindset but i don't want i don't want to sit here and say quit your job and do all this stuff because that's that's just irrational and and it i've <laughs> i've done that before and it didn't really make sense um with no plan and uh but if, if you have a plan if, if you have a plan it's sustainable and you have people around you that's that are going to support you and all that Oh, fine. That's awesome and fine and dandy. But if you don't have a plan, 
don't do it. Trust me, I've learned from experience. It's, it's that's a terrible road to go down. Um, it's actually, um, I could probably talk about that for like seven hours, but it's a, it's it's a it's a hard road. I shouldn't say terrible. It's just hard, very hard. Teaches you a lot, teaches you a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons. But you come come to appreciate the small things in life. But anyways, that's a whole entire another like series of videos. Another thing that I'm that I'm really that I really really enjoyed about this book is the way he worded things. Because like Jordan Peterson. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna, at some point in this channel, I, at some point, my brain for some reason can't, cannot put together a review for the 12 rules for life. Uh, but at some point it's gonna be on my channel. Uh, but the way he describes stuff is so damn intellectual that I'm like, okay, I know what that word means, but how does it, what does he mean by that sentence? And by the time I come up with that answer, he's 14 chapters down the road and I'm like, Okay, actually, my buddy TJ and his brother Mike, they actually just did a review on that uh, on on uh, the podcast. The podcast name is Underdog Books. I'll put a link to that uh, below. Uh, but they just they just talked about the 12 Wars for Life. So, so that, that's one of the things, and that's a, a nice ramble for you. If you're new to the channel, I ramble a lot. And uh, another thing, uh, like I mentioned about quitting your job and with no plan and all that, I've done that, and it was hard. But... The struggle that was within that decision, there was a lot of beauty in it as well. And he talks about that in the book. Um, again, you learn to appreciate the small things. And this, this is this is what this is within limits. Like, I mean, the way I struggled, it was mainly it was mainly financially. But I mean, there, there's a lot of ways to struggle. But that's that's kind of just my experience with it. Um, but yes, there's always beauty in the struggle. We're responsible for dealing with our reality. So uh, uh, I think a type of example he used was like. If someone, if you're just chilling at your house and someone dropped a baby off at your front door, that baby wasn't your problem, but it's now your responsibility because it's your reality. Now you gotta figure out what to do with this this baby that someone just left, like <laughs> like on like on Benjamin. Perfect example. Oh my god, I can't believe I just thought that. I just watched Benjamin Button, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago, and that's the way the movie started was uh, it's not a spoiler alert, it's, it's in the beginning of the movie. It might be a spoiler alert, so I'm just gonna say spoiler alert, I don't know. But in the beginning of the movie, you know, this lady births Mr. Benjamin Button, and uh, his dad, obviously, if you know what Benjamin Button is, it's, it's the disease in which the baby is born, and it looks like a 90-year-old man. So the father looked at the baby and was disgusted, so he snatched the baby up and ran the baby through town and dropped the baby off at some black lady's house. And then the black lady, it wasn't her problem, but then she saw it, and she was like, okay, it's not my responsibility, so she brought the baby in, raised it, all that stuff. And that's kind of what that, that's kind of what that, what he was talking about in the book. I don't think he mentioned Benjamin Button in the book, but. So again, the concept of uh, going, going back to my mom, um, reject, how's it say here? Rejecting nothing, okay? Rejecting nothing leads to a valueless, pleasure-driven, self-absorbed life. That is, that's kind of where alcoholism derived from in my family. Um, that's kind of where I got into alcohol because I didn't stand for anything. When you, when you have nothing to say no to, you you, you turn to things to uh, to make you feel good about yourself, um, to give you to give you pleasure, and it's it becomes it becomes this whole selfish, revolving thing of of trying to get the next the next high, and then not figuring anything out, and then getting the next high, and then still standing for nothing, and then getting the next high, and that's. That's kind of that's kind of the thing. I want to hit on one more thing actually. It, 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 it's in here. It hit me really, um, really strongly the other day. This is this is this will be the last thing for sure. Hundred percent, hundred thousand percent. This will be the last thing. And it says changing your values will cause discomfort. Changing priorities and values will cause rejection in some places in your life. This is normal. This is changing the fucks you give. Resistance is inevitable. So the reason behind that is because if you live a life for an extended period of time in which your values are set one way. You're, you're then building relationships around those values. So when you change those values and the people around you that you've built relationships with aren't changing, they're gonna reject you potentially or potentially reject the new value set that you create. And again, this value set, this newfound value set is the one in which you're choosing the fucks to give. And that, that was, 100% the most powerful part of the book for me. I'm, a, I'm guessing because I can relate to it so much in this current moment I'm filming this video. And that rejection is a very, it's a very odd feeling. It's a very, uh, it's unique. It's new. Um, it's much needed, you know? And 
and if you're going to practice this this concept of of changing your value set changing um changing your life and your ideas into or towards or pushing your life towards the fucks that you want to give and the problems you want to deal with if that's what you're doing if that's the practice you have to you have to prepare to have a strong mind and not fall back into the value set that you didn't like that you weren't thriving in that you weren't falling in love with every day again this is beyond the job <clears throat> this is this isn't this isn't just about money this is this is far deeper than just a financial gain or or uh, or, or a, some sort of business venture or some sort of entrepreneurship thing this is far deeper than that it's, it goes deep down to the soul right again we got one life man one life to live what's going to what's going to be what's going to be the factor that that's going to change our mind to understand that that is a reality mortality it's coming at some point so why not why not live every day doing exactly what you want to do again be sensible about it don't be crazy right don't make any drastic drastic don't make any vast crazy drastic decisions right plan execute plan execute be smart about it i've learned that i've learned i'm not master at it all i've just learned the concept got a plan execute plan execute i'll tell you grow so with all that being said this video is coming on 20 minutes long it's hot um um camera's about to die surprise it hasn't gone yet and hopefully i made some sort of sense in this video um it made sense in my head but my head my brain my thought patterns are always all over the place anyway so um with all that being said I appreciate you guys stopping by. Like I said in the beginning, if I said in the beginning, we're coming up on a thousand subscribers, and that's crazy that that many people would just want to hang out and and listen or chat or comment or share my videos or whatever. Um, I'm just I'm just really, really really thankful for for all you guys in the community that we're building, and um, and yeah, thank you thank you thank you. So um, until next time, give the video a like if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs down if you hated everything I said and that this concept means nothing to you. And if you want to talk about it, if you want to have a conversation, of course, leave a comment down below and um, hit that subscribe button if, um, if you so choose. And uh, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.